Still thinking about leadership, innovation, and integrity? Yearning to learn about Bahamian leaders who fit the mold? Pause. Think about it with intentional thought and consider where we go from here. Stay tuned and hear what the Honorable Pierre de Puch has to say about his father, Sir Alfred Etienne Jerome de Puch, OBE, the man, the journalist, and the activist. Something to think about with Dale Happy Knowles. What we think, we become. What we radiate, we attract. What we imagine, we surely can achieve. Let's change the narrative, 242. Welcome back to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knows. Join our co-sponsors, Dom Dev Enterprises and Page Investments, and our friends at Something to Think as we have this lovely discussion this evening with the Honorable Pierre de Puch. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Great. Now, you are a graduate, a scholar of St. John's University in uh, economics, and you also went to Carnegie Institute of Tech, uh, and you got your printing and publishing management degree. Um, you're also a rabbit photographer, had some famous photos, a co-founder of executive uh, printers of the Bahamas with your brother, um, I think it's Bernard, correct? That's right, yes, Bernard. Yes, yes, I met him once. And, um, and you also had a, a story or a, a um, impactful, I should say, uh, career in uh, politics, if you could call it that. You started in the House of Assembly as a member of parliament in 1982, and you were there for 25 years. Well, that's some service. And we all know your family man, a wife, have a wife of 56 years. Man, that's older than me. And uh, five children. And my pride and joy is that you are also the founder of the Camperdown Equestrian Center. Um, you, you gave a lot for that. That's a pretty short version of your lengthy bio. So how, how does that come about, that those are the highlights that I can see um, today? Of myself or my father? No, of you. We're going to get to your father in a second. We're going to let the people know who you are first. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you just about covered it. Um, I, work, I work for the Tribune. Of course, we were, we all, the six of us were in the family. We all worked in the Tribune. Okay. Since we can remember, I mean, we were seven, eight years old, we were still there. We were there, and um, so we grew up under the my father and, and mother. Of course, she's a, you know they always say that oh behind every great man is a great woman. I always say it's a greater woman. Yeah, that woman. And um, we uh, we we lived a, a very happy life at Camperdown. In those days, there were only two people, two two families living up there. The rest was Bush. Mm. We had son Road was old Bush. Uh, that I bought that property eventually, uh, mm -hmm. but we we had our own own little community there. We raised our, you know, my father was very avid about agriculture and feeding ourselves in the Bahamas, and so am I. And mm -hmm. uh, we raised uh, cows and sheep and goats and horses and chickens. Great, raised their own, had our own orchards, um, and uh, this was our life. We we right uh, right. And then when we weren't there, we were the Tribune doing something there. Some productive, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the party kind of people grew up. We had a, a all, all work. They say, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I always say all work and no, no play makes Jack, so. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah. So last, last week, we spoke of leadership, innovation, and integrity with the His Excellency's uh, Leon Williams. Uh, you would know him from BTC back then. Um, and it seems like the audience really took to, to the subjects. And so we thought we would invite you on to come on and talk about your father because we feel that he fits the bill 
on the mold and the profile of, of the three things, um, say at the end. And so, um, tell us a little bit about, uh, about that, because you are a very generous man. And so I believe that that has to come either through your big, your siblings or through your father and your mother, etc. Give us a little touch on that piece before we dig into it. Uh, well, I think that, uh, we, we were raised that way. All of us were raised that way. Uh, mm -hmm. My father was, was overly generous. I suppose he would almost borrow money if you to lend you some if you were in real trouble. And uh, we were always taught to look out for our, the people around us. And uh, mm -hmm. so we, we, we do. I, uh, I did the camp it out thing because for any number of reasons. First of all, I, I loved horses and children. And that's basically my way of life up there. By me and my sisters and brothers, and uh, I think that in the in this country, I I, I believe that or most of these countries, we do a lot of blaming on children, but we mm -hmm. don't, don't do a tremendous amount of helping children and guiding them and giving them them, them, them some sort of thing to occupy their life, so they they you know they grow up. Um, mm -hmm. The kids at Camp Down, I you may have read the little little note I made on that some time ago. Uh, I started Camp Down because there were kids, they all used to call me Uncle Pierre. Um, mm -hmm. No matter what, who they were, how rich they were, how poor they were, how color they were, they all used to call me Uncle Pierre. And um, I found that they, they said, you know, Uncle Pierre, the only thing we have to do is sit on the wall and the, the drug people come around and offer us drugs. Mm -hmm. And I had horses, and uh, some of my friends had horses, and uh, so I uh, we went out to the racetrack one day for the Humane Society horse show, and the lady they said we had such tremendous talent in that, so there was no re there was no way of it's it's unfortunate she said that uh, that we had no way for the children to ride. Mm -hmm. so I said I had some some property at Camper Down and I loved horses. I had these horses and what have you. And then I, uh, I started from there. I said, we would, we would, uh, I would use that property for, for kids. And that right. was the 52 years ago. I figured it was only going to take about 10 years and then move on. But it's now 52 years <laughs> and we're still there. Um, uh, and the, the I have to give credit. I always had never never taken all the credit myself because there's no such thing as one person. Uh, the people that that uh, surrounded me and helped in that 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 venture are the people that should be really thanked. I remember the the man he's dead now, Mr. McCadden, Ray McCadden, uh, who ran I think Bahamas Pavers. Uh, okay. I asked him uh, if he would how much he would charge to clear the ring or clear the area because it was all bush then. And he said, and I said, it was for children. And he said, are you guarantee it's for children? I said, yes. And he says, well, I'll charge you nothing. The only thing you'll have to do is pay for the diesel. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, fine. And he went ahead and he had several payloaders up there and all those, these heavy machines and did all the stuff because we have a lot of caves up there fill them all in and we created the, the ring you see up there now. Right. And Mr. McCadden's been dead for about 10 years and I haven't seen the bill for the de for the diesel yet. Wow. So, um, you know, and we had, then he got a lot of his friends together and he built jumps together and they painted them and all this sort of stuff. And uh, the kids uh, who had horses let other kids borrow their horses. And I think your child rode my horse for some time until you yeah. did his father, his grandfather bought him one. Um, right. And this is how we just shared it. And it's just grown from there. It's become very popular. Uh, but I must say that, that what I have found now, we don't get the the cooperation that we used to. People didn't pitch mm -hmm. it to help. They figured, the well, community work, like, they mm -hmm. let somebody else do it and they just drop the kid there. Some of the people drop the kids there and leave them. And right. when it started out, we had parents there all the time. And, uh, somebody was holding a flashlight and I was building something for them. And right. The right. way it worked up there. Right. But so that's the, the, we would, we, we, anything we do, I, I give to, I, I, uh, credit my parents for, uh, because they really made us and raised us, raised us. Mm -hmm. the well, good that's great. A lot of people don't like me. And I suppose that's the reason 
they, they, they raised me. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry. So you, you, um, well, first of all, um, you know, once again, I would like to publicly thank you for all your generosity with, with, with Dominic's development and even mine, um, because whilst Dominic was writing on, um, you know, I would be there sitting there, um, half report and you would come down and we would talk and that'll be hours that we'd be talking and I learned so much about a lot of things from you um, and those conversations and you know I really um, cherish those and I'm sure he also cherished all uh, the things that you did for him but I also observed that you were very uh, firm and direct and um, purposed in everything you did because even though we might have been under the tree talking it had to be with something of constructive purpose. Uh, you weren't going to be idle talking with some of these um, quack stuff that would be going on in the world, politics or wherever else. It was Eddie also like that? Yeah, very much, very much that way. Uh, he was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was born into the business. I think the Tribune started when he was four years old. And he ran away to, 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 the, to the First World War. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, he, he lied about his age because he went there young, one, one year younger than he's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. uh, he came back here, and uh, his life also was, was giving giving and doing things for people and uh, everything other than the tribute he was doing, the Crippled Children. He started the Crippled Children's Fund. He did the War Materials Fund with the Second World War, the War Materials. Okay. Was a, was what, what's, what's that when you say the war materials? I mean, for yeah, the right. actual veterans, people donated very anything, anything, okay. In, and uh, this went to it, they were taken off to England and used for war, you know, the, the conversion, okay. what have you. And it was the second largest uh, in the British in the entire British Empire, second largest mm. donations, uh, oh. such as that. We had he, he started it, of course. You know, I, 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 I was reading a book here while I was waiting, and I read about Mahatma Gandhi. He said, oh, there are two types of people in this world, those who take the credit and those who actually do the work. Right. He, he never took credit for anything, but he did a tremendous amount of work for other people and the whole, well, other people mm -hmm. in our country. Uh, his crippled children's thing was uh, quite a few years later, of course, uh, mm -hmm. Backer of Miami uh, wrote him a letter and said, "I understand you, you, uh, you know, raise money for people who are in need, and we have a young boy here who who has polio, and uh, mm -hmm. he said he would do the operation free, but he needed the money for the hope for the hospital. Right. So that started wrote an editorial and started a fund called the Crippled Children. Well, just for that child, but it was so oversubscribed." That he there was money left over, and Doctor Burbacca said, "You know, there are a lot of crippled children in the Bahamas. He would come over here. He and Mister Feniston and, and a couple others would come over here once a month, I think it was, and uh, do the children check the children out and take them over to Miami and do their their operations and what have you. And uh, I was very close to that because I used to take pictures for the doctors to to show them, you know, so that they could look at them and study." Uh, right. how her child has progressed and uh, he ended up starting the crippled children's fund and uh, it uh, they dr burbacker and mr feniston those did uh, took care of every crippled child in the bahamas was over went over there no yeah. so, so the, he so, uh, go ahead go ahead no i was going to say with with all of these uh charitable type activities and, and staying focused and and they're like when did he all have time to do journalism how did he, how well, did he evolve know, into that and and some people go to parties and they play dominoes and they talk in foolishness and they go to bar rooms and have sweethearts and he did none <laughs> of it um mm -hmm. he was all work and our entire our entire family was all work we woke up in the morning and we worked and started and you know, he always said, you know, you have your watch for 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 uh, to make sure you're on time, and then you throw away away the rot watch and you stay work until it's finished. Oh boy! So you know, as a as a photographer, we used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, oftentimes uh, we were up at three o'clock in the morning taking pictures um, mm -hmm. of, of various accidents and 
any number of things. We were called any time, and he was out the same the same way. And mm -hmm. uh, his work. Mine, it wasn't a lot of people say, you know, about work, but I we we enjoyed every minute of it. Right, um, right. Well, you you were with your family. Yeah. Yeah. So as a group, mm -hmm. as a group, we were doing a lot of things, I suppose. Yeah. And so, what what was the the um, atmosphere in the Bahamas back then in terms of um, what kind of journalism was it that would, that the Tribune um, grew the out of? Tribune, <clears throat> the Tribune was started by my grandfather, who was, was named Leon. Uh, okay. My son is named Leon also. But um, it was started in 1903. To, to, uh, he, was a, he, he used to work for The Guardian at the time. And mm -hmm. uh, it was founded to, to help people uh, advance and his philosophy was that all people were created without were equal which meant that all people had equal opportunity and mm -hmm. this is what he fought for all his life and the tribune uh he carried on the banner the tribune uh that gave was trying to to see that everybody white black chinese greek they, you know people talk about discrimination they think about black people only but mm -hmm. in the Bahamas, it was they, they discriminated against Greece, the Syrians, Chinese, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Black people, obviously, they they they. Uh, and this was under British rule, or, or this was Korean after? Korean. Pardon? This was under the British rule, or after? Or it was a, uh, it was a British rule. The British. Rule. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, you know, the uh, they even discriminated with white people. Uh, they, you know, you were certain certain class she went to government house and other ones don't didn't mm -hmm. uh, so uh but he he fought that and you might remember it i know uh, uh george did your father-in-law because he was working at the tribune at the time uh mm -hmm. that politics and he uh and this again is people don't don't would like him like to bury this idea mm -hmm. but he finally brought it to a head uh mm -hmm. in 56 in the house of assembly with a famous speech Right. Uh, that uh, if some most people don't know about it, but yeah, but we we want to break into detail on that after the um, the break. Yeah. Um. But that that I find that to be one of the major milestones that we're gonna be moving forward with. So, in terms of what would be happening in the Bahamas at the time, from a journalistic point of view, that um, because I read where he was uh, noted across the world um, and been honored by multiple um, kings and queens and what have you uh, for well, his journalistic I mean, those days, It's not like it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we were told as reporters that we couldn't use a mask, we could never put our name on a masthead. He said oh. that you were supposed to, as a reporter, go out and report what you see. Mm -hmm report the facts and he says when you want the opinion you can turn to page three and read my editorial okay. so uh, his editorial was what the tribune believed in uh, or aspired and uh the, the facts were out there that we had to come in and report what was there and we write our story around it uh, mm -hmm. but we never dared put a, an opinion in it not our own opinion you give mm -hmm. your opinion, but if you wanted to give you your, your opinion, we had to get the other person's opinion also. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's the way he ran the, the journalism, and it was quite interesting, actually. You, you know, you you we we ended up interviewing people like Buster Matty and as I said in the, the prosket, we mm -hmm. were busy all the, we were busy all the time. Uh, but that there is a major change I see in journalism today. Right, and so from that perspective, because I hear people say that the, the media or journalists are supposed to be the force of state, but that seems to have disappeared, and you just alluded to it not being the same. What what did the force of state actually mean? Well, the force of state is that you have the government, and you have then you have the the force of state is supposed to be a completely independent group that looks at the the, the way the government operates and what have you. And they're, mm -hmm. supposed, they're supposed to, this is not true anymore, they're supposed to uh, report the facts so that the mm -hmm. very 
the citizens of the country could read the can read and make up their own mind. It's a matter right. of having respect for the people who have uh, your your. You know, nowadays you, especially in American press, they think you're stupid. They have to mm -hmm. tell you what to think. Rather than in, in, in the days that we were at the Tribune and, 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 and the days he wrote, ran it, uh, we gave you the facts and let you do the make up your mind as to what you wanted to believe. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a tremendous, it has a tremendous implication and it sounds simple, but it's not because I believe that the free world depends on a free press mm -hmm. that, that reports the information and has respect for the people who read it and respect them to understand, respect that they will understand what you're saying and make up their own mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we had, of course, we had uh, political parties here, which I think would be the de detriment of all countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and they became very, very one-sided. Mm -hmm. would look at oh if you have a yellow shirt on you're a PFP and if you have a red shirt on you're you're F and M and that, that kind of stuff and so they weren't people are not looking at facts anymore mm -hmm. they're looking at, they're looking more at emotions and this is something that we always fought against at the Tribune and he and okay. of course he was the he was the leader of the gang so to speak right right mm -hmm. cool and so in this um. When he started his, his political journey in the House, that would have been uh, like what year? Oh man, that was before I was born. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So yeah. um, he started as a representative, I think, of Inagua. It was way back. I think it was twenty some twenty nine or something like that. Twenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he represented Inagua. Some of the people there are named after him, Etienne, Etienne Farquharson was. Yeah, I know Etienne. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he came and he, he represented the Eastern District for not a number of years. Uh, but he and my uncle, my two uncles actually were in the House of Assembly together, the three of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was uh, he was very active, and then he wrote. He had the, uh, his editorial was called Political Back Chat. Right. Which was comments on basically the political situations of the day. Uh, and he was, he didn't have very many friends in the Bay Street then. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can imagine. But, you know, that, so, that, that, that was life. Uh, that was a part mm -hmm. of our life. But we, uh, we came up with threats of our lives and, you know, all sorts of stuff. It was really rough times. But, um, uh, Again, we felt it was our duty. We just felt it was a part of us, a part of what we were here for, and uh, we enjoyed everything. Uh, yeah. he, went to, he went there at night. He went to the House of Assembly at night, it was. And uh, we all, you know, we, 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 we were just together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say, you know, I don't want to leave my mother out because she was, she was really the, the, the uh, the mainstay, the, the backbone of our family. Yeah, the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. She was a very s strong, strict woman, and she was really the disciplinar disciplinary in our family. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, uh, they were married for I think it was sixty three years when he died. Wow. So, uh, that's the way it was. But the <laughs> important thing was, I think that people, you know, the thing that that, that people went when. when the world started and the Bahamas started in 67. Unfortunately, this is what people were led to believe. Mm -hmm. They were led to believe that we were racist. We were far from racist with the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was a political thing. And uh, it's unfortunate because a lot of people <coughs> don't know what a lot of people did in this country before then. Right, right. AFI yeah. nobody knows who he is. Dr. Walker, nobody knows who he is. Uh, talk about the old man, most of the people even don't know who he is. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So when we look, look at that then, um, in terms of he, uh, in terms of his values, because you said that that he would have bucked or his, his um, column would have caused much distension amongst the, the members, then 
it was, is it fair to say that then he was not a, a part of what is known to be the Bay Street Boys? Oh, he never was a Bay Street Boy. Mm -hmm. He was their biggest, their biggest enemy. So oh. That's what people are led, your age, are led to believe that we were part of the Bay Street Boys. Mm -hmm. uh, he supported Bay Street in the 62 and 67 elections simply because uh, he did not believe in the radicalism of the PLP. And okay. nor they were made up to this day. Because mm -hmm. they turned, as far as I'm concerned, they uh, surrendered. And I'm not saying he didn't do anything, so I'm not that kind of person. But the 56, in 1956, Sir Lyndon was still a schoolboy in England, mm -hmm. uh, or had just come home. And uh, the old man, it's 56, the thing in the House of Assembly, the anti-discrimination thing, was sort of the culmination of what we believed in all our lives. And uh, he that was something to, 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 was against the Bay Street Boys, of course. Right. Uh, because they believed in discrimination and they they tried to block it. In fact, they did block the resolution. But right. uh, that night they almost had a riot and he just got on a car and told the people, go home and rest. And really, the you, next oh, day... That's Sir Lyndon or, or uh, your dad? Sir Lyndon wasn't even a, mem a member of parliament. Of the oh, okay, okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Yeah. H.M. Taylor was. And right. Stevenson. Right, but he nice, told nice. all the people to go home and behave. And the very next morning, Lady Oates, uh, who owned the British Colonial at the time, mm -hmm. and, uh, that was the biggest hotel in the Bahamas at the time, she put an ad in the paper saying that everybody was, and everybody, regardless of the color of their skin or the re religion or anything else, were welcome to come into British Colonial any time they wanted to. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So long as they were properly dressed and properly, you know. And, um, uh, and it started, it went like a, it had a domino effect. Everybody started to break down. Every, you could then go into restaurants and you can go into Savoy Theater and that, that kind of thing. So the whole thing broke down then. Now, right. the, again, I'm not trying to be political, but the, where the color card, which is a very, as far as I'm concerned, a very dangerous thing. Hitler mm -hmm. used uh, this man, Trump is using it. Uh, everybody, right. dictator uses it because it's one of the most inflammable things in the world. If you get a man upset about color, uh, he's like almost like a, a, ma a maniac thing, you know, they right. get a mm -hmm. thing. And our family, my father in particular, did not believe in that kind of stuff because right. he believed that he believed in exactly what happened. Basically, basically discrimination was broken down in this country in 1956 by a simple speech with a, with a hard headed man who refused to sit down when the speaker told him to, the Bay Street Boys told him to. And mm -hmm. he said, the British, British, entire British army here, but I'm not right. sitting down tonight. We are coming yeah. to some, some conclusion. And then telling right. the people, don't riot, go home, don't get yourself in trouble. And that there, as far as I am concerned, was the thing that broke and everything, you know. But people, right. uh, I think it was George, not George Marxier's son, we used to call him Blood and Guts. Uh, I, in an interview with the Tribune, just before he died, I understand, he said that he was a big part of the PLP. He said that they had decided, the group had decided, there were certain names were too powerful in this country uh, mm -hmm. and they had to break them down. And my father's name was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they accused us of everything. I mean, I was a racist and he was a racist and all sorts of stuff. And, and I didn't laugh at it because I don't think it's funny. Uh, mm -hmm. But I didn't let it upset me too much. Uh, mm -hmm. I just kept going on and doing what I had to do, and uh, never racism. I, we we well, I've taken a whole show to tell you about, about the experience right. uh, mm -hmm. and how it's handled. Uh, and this is the way it was. So people your age believe or have been taught to believe that our family and my father in particular were one of the Bay Street boys. Uh, that, uh, that, but it was the complete opposite. With the only mm -hmm. opposition, he well, not the only one, because Bert Cambridge was there, uh, Dr. Walker, Mr. Adley, and all these people were there. But he had the newspaper, and he was the most vocal one. And he would meet with, uh, you know, Mrs. Ingram and the, all of these ladies, who the, 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 
the female movement in the country. Mm -hmm. That started right. long, long before the PLC. Right, was before that time. So, so is this let's, let's just put a pencil on that for pause right there. And we're going to take this couple of seconds to play uh, our bill. And then we come back, we can dive into that a little deeper. Okay. Bye. Sammy's Chicken. There's nothing like it. When you're looking for clothing, you can shop from store to store. But when you need gowns and tuxedos for weddings, proms, or any black tie event, there's only one name to remember. Buttons Bridal and Formal Wear since 1986. Enjoy gowns and tuxedos for any budget. We'll see you at Buttons Showroom in Cable Beach, Nassau. Or visit ButtonsFormalWear.com. Nobody does formal wear. My buttons. Scoop, lick, and savor is a smile and memory being made or reminisce. Whether you're at work, out with family on a Sunday, or have friends visiting, flavor will meet expectations in our 32 ounce container for only $10 if you're having a special event as well. Exotic flavors ranging from sour soft to Guinness is definitely worthwhile. Welcome back to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knowles. We're here this evening with the Honorable Pierre de Puch. He's talking about his father, Sir Etienne de Puch. And um, we're driving back into time and we talked a little bit about him as a man and his morals and, and standards as the family as a whole and his journalism. And now we're drilling into some of the political part of, of his life. And the most esteemed position that he took when he made the stand in 1965, 50, 55, and he became, they talked about the anti-discrimination bill as it is known today, at least that's what I remember seeing as read as, where he took the stand to fight, but then across the spectrum of persons, uh, not just um, black and whites, because I always talk about the lily whites, uh, which the baseball boys I refer to them as, because it was just a small subset. But um, welcome back, Mr. Depuch. How are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. So could you um, give us an idea then? How did it how did it come about for your father to be able to to uh, address? The, the the assembly that day because I mean there had to be some brewing I'm um, thinking that caused it to reach to that point where he would get up and actually well, he, put he, his he, foot down. So he he thought that the day had sort of come that uh, that something should be done collectively. I suppose mm -hmm. and, um, he he asked for a a, a committee to investigate this situation and do something about it and because he said it was wrong and and and, uh, and not only for uh then 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 unfortunately the color card was brought in and mm -hmm. when you bring the color card in as i said with germany and all of that you get people emotional and you get mobs and this kind of stuff right and rather than voting for for ability 
you're voting for either religion or color or sex or something like that and that is wrong mm -hmm. whether it be color or whether it be sex meaning woman or man you know i'm not going to vote for her because she's a woman kind of thing right, um, right. that kind of thing is wrong and all of this here had to be brought together because it was we at that time our country was expanding it was it was you know tourism was growing and that's that kind of stuff and uh, as i say he was always he was always uh against the the ubp or bay street boys or whatever you call it um mm -hmm. he, he did support them in 62 as i said and in 67 uh because he felt that uh that they had changed their mind basically to accommodate uh the idea that that everybody was created for equal opportunity and uh they did have the ability to run the country. There's no question about that. Uh, Stafford Sands, I personally didn't like the man, but to say he wasn't a, a brilliant man, is, you'd be a fool. This man, mm -hmm. was, I, I talked to him several times in my lifetime, and I found him to be extremely brilliant in finance and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, you know, it was, we, he left the country nine, $9 million, no, $10 million in the black mm -hmm. and now nine billion dollars in the hole right, uh, right, he, yeah. he knew his economics he knew his business and what have you like that yeah. uh, so you take a lot of them the biggest fault that most of them had uh, the you know the biggest fault that they had was that they discriminated mm -hmm. and oddly enough a lot of them weren't that great it was sort of um leaning on each other for support this is where we yeah. had uh, uh, the advantage we relied on each other for this. So your your, your um, father and his brothers. His father, my father, his brothers, and and, and our brother, my brothers, and my sisters, and what have you. We were a, a, a unit unit to ourselves, so we didn't have to worry about about people, uh, you know, not not wanting us. I know of situations where there's some people, some very white people, and some very prominent white people in politics um, mm -hmm. were definitely in love with with uh, black girls mm -hmm. and they were told by their peers you better stop this or we'll throw you out of the club or wherever you may be and you'll be ostracized right, so right. Mm -hmm. the rest of their life that way because they they were relying on the support of their friend their friends if, if you understand what i mean right yeah mm -hmm. uh, you had a lot of that. You yeah. had a lot of that, and a lot of a lot of. Uh, but they had they had uh, the the uh, business sense that right. meant to take take. Uh, All right. So this so, is what happens. You have to, uh, and I I think that people should know that after fifty six, not a single ounce of blood was 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 shed. Mm -hmm. That is a, is a milestone, because. Mm -hmm. Rather than keeping it emotional, you're trying to talk sense into people. Now, whether or not he was right, I don't know. All right. I know is this is the way he stood, and I, I believed him. And, and uh, I have had personal experiences that would, would show you how most of this color thing and racial thing and all this sort of stuff is more education than right. right. They, yeah. They, they, so, they, believe what, some, they believe something because they've been told it. Like you believe, not you, but people believe mm -hmm. we have UBPs because people talk it where UBPs and we're racist and they right, know right. So they aren't prepared to look at the situation and actually see for themselves. Right. That's and that's why I was gonna ask you though. So and let's define what was in the house at the time. Is you you you're talking about the UBPs and then you had um the deputies and and some others who might have been independent of the UBPs. What was the social and climate? Because what was saying it most of the time when I would hear uh, um, in the eras of the you know, Norman Solomons and the rest when they were having the big backward and forward um, debates in the house and stuff because we used to find those to be like going to the to the play to the Dundas kind of thing. We used to like to hear them um, shout at each other and what have you. But, you but see it, it always seemed to be. Uh, polarized based on color. And so you're saying that it has more dynamics to it than that. And so 
could you elaborate on that for us? Well, you, you talk about Norman. Uh, uh, his brother Roy was the one I was mm -hmm. talking about. Okay. Uh, and everybody, the PLT, he was one of the names that they said they had to destroy. Mm -hmm. Roy was called the PL, which was called a, a racist. Now, uh, one of the Cecil told me this, and I don't know which ones they were or whatever it was, but Safa Sands of all people invited them to join his law practice. Mm -hmm. And I said to him when he told me that, I said, why didn't you all do it? He said, because we were called Uncle Tom's. Mm -hmm. See, people don't understand this, the, 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 the logic behind a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. I do not do certain things because I may upset my friends and I rely on my friends to sort of bolster me because I'm having cocktails with him tomorrow night and and tomorrow night I have to have my cocktails. You see, right. and this is this was this was was, was two sides. The P, the the F the UBP made the big mistake in uh, in the sixties, early sixties, not to follow Bermuda. Bermuda came here to find out what happened in in, in Nassau, and mm -hmm. they went back and they very quickly integrated their parties, and you didn't have any of this foolishness in in Bermuda. Right. They integrated the parties. And uh, so you had a lot of people, you had a lot of people, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but you had a lot of people who were so-called racist simply because of a situation that was on the ground at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to join Stafford Sands because I want to, I don't want to be called a, a, an Uncle Tom. Mm -hmm. it, it works both ways. And right. People, unfortunately, don't like to recognize it i can tell you of, of uh i mean this is not that and, and, and stop me if I'm, I'm wrong but you know dr mccarty and i you remember dr mccarty's dead now he and i were mm -hmm. like it was dr mccarty myself and and, and uh and charlie christopher we went to st john's together and we we had spoken to each other he spoke to me a couple of days before he died uh we constantly in touch but at St. John's, a, young, a fellow came from the south. He came up to me one day and he says, the future, I got a problem. I said, what's your problem? He says, you know where I come from and my parents taught me and my grandparents taught me that black people's brains were smaller than white people and they smell different. He says, mm -hmm. but Timmy there, Tim McCartney that is, and he's mm -hmm. in class and he don't smell any different. I mm -hmm. said, well, my friend, that's your first lesson. Mm -hmm. And from then, from then on, he became very friendly with it. You see, but he was under the impression, and this is what you found, basically, is the basis of the discrimination uh, right. that certain people. We had uh, the the situation where the governor would 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 only invite English people to government house, to government house, even the big, big shots in politics. Some of the mm -hmm. big shots in politics couldn't go to government house in those days, and were white people. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know it's a it's a very difficult thing to, to 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 understand, and the way you 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 face it, as far as I am concerned, is to face it head on. Just it, right, is, right. it is, and and keep moving. And uh, maybe all this this radicalism was necessary, but I don't think that it was. Uh, and I think that uh, you know to start a lie on somebody. You know, the, the some of the fellows, I won't call any names, they had Machia, what your Machiavellian philosophies. Mm -hmm. Machiavellian felt that if I wanted to get the other side of the street and it meant shooting you to do it, I'll shoot you. Right. That's the Machia The end justifies the means. You've probably heard right, that right. before. Right, right, yes. Mm -hmm. so in order to to, to get the, they, they destroy certain names to Puch and, and, right. and that and Sands and they, all sorts of things that talked about them. Uh, and uh, this, this is wrong. This is wrong. And we felt it was wrong. And, uh, and so we uh, stood up against it. Mm -hmm. And we fought against that too. We fought against the way the Bay Street Boys, or the UBP, the Bay Street Boys, and uh, they didn't become based UBP until 55, I think. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. We formed a party after PLP formed the party, which was mm -hmm. in 54. 53. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, 
but the Bay Street Boys were were, were a click, and uh, they 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 uh, economically fine, racially awful, and mm-hmm. I think they brought all of this stuff up with their parents, their grandparents, and what have you, and it's sort of you know that way. Uh, people don't understand also, you know, and with the, with the use of of uh, the modern use of, of technology. Uh, a lot of this stuff could be used to, to, to cause fires. But you know mm-hmm. that uh, to cross Pyrenees, what's his name? I forget. Uh, it was, he had an army. You know, uh, the man who crossed the Pyrenees in Italy, southern Italy. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know what his army was? His no, army. Was trying to uh, do you know who his slaves were? They were white. Okay. Conquered southern Italy, and this is one of the reasons why you find the southern, the a lot of people from South Italy, sort of yellowish color. They were, right. mm-hmm. but in those days he had slaves, white slaves, and black army, and then sometimes they had white white army and black slaves. All mm-hmm. of it was wrong, but that's what's the time. You know, we right. say I say to people, look, let's forget about it. Just make sure. That we didn't control the past. Only we control is to make control sure the future again. Okay. Yeah. And that is what his philosophy was, and that is what our family's philosophy was. And that's that's how we were brought up with with, with my mother and father, both of them together. Right. right. So Mr. Butch, tell tell us now then uh, from the actual uh event. Was that just a one time event in terms of after the speech, then there was a committee, and they came back and and no, they didn't have a committee. put the law forward, or they, they had to go through some. They voted it down, but after that event, after that event, basically it just was a matter of time before this, this, you know everybody opened the, opened the doors. The right. colonial being one of the big operations in the country, they opened the doors, and then everybody followed. Mm-hmm. Um, you had a lot of. Uh, you had my friend Charlie told me, for example, that he used to work at a bank here. Now he had a degree and everything else, mm-hmm. he a bank for a long time. But he got tra- he transferred, asked for a transfer to, to New York. Mm-hmm. Now he was Greek and he was white. Mm-hmm. And, um, he said because he was a Bahamian, he couldn't get a promotion in the bank. Mm-hmm. Because in those days they brought all the foreigners, the Canadian boys, in. Okay, right. You had mm-hmm. the bank house down there by the Tribune, by with jams right now. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I know what I mean. The, it's, a, it's a liquor shop now. That used to be where, that, where, where they used to live. So there was a situation, and so he said he transferred to New York. But when when he went to New York, he couldn't get promoted because he was a foreigner. <laughs> so all of this is just stupid stuff right today he, he went into the law he went to look to wall street and today he's for the last 20 years he's been retired and cruising around the world as a millionaire you know oh, but this yeah. is the way this is the way that you have to fight against these sort of silly little prejudices that people have right mm-hmm. yeah and so that fight was able to enable some things to happen in the country because like you say it started to open the doors or people's minds started to change as to how they uh, approached it what of course, not to cut, touch up with the women Go ahead. We- women's vote in 62. that didn't mm-hmm. just happen you know he used to have meetings with them almost every day i would go in the tribune and see one one of these people meeting with him that then he mm-hmm. would have him over because he was the front sort of the front runner with the newspaper and what have you and a lot of these people who work on these things came and we he talked to them and, and what have you. You have to remember that, uh, you know, it was the Honorable AF Ad, you probably, you're too young to remember him. He's a fantastic man. Mm-hmm. Fantastic man. A fantastic lawyer. And the irony of this, this prejudice stuff, if a white man was in legal trouble, real serious legal trouble, mm-hmm. and he had to go to court, guess who he would hire? Yeah, finally. Gladly. Okay, mm-hmm. and then after court, he couldn't tell Miss Daddy, "Let's go together to Savoy Theatre and watch a movie." Mm-hmm. That's how stupid it was. Okay, right. but Mr. Adley, 
Dr. Walker. Uh, a lot of these, uh, uh, I even forget, forget that, that's the age now, but uh, a lot of these people were, were a part of, a, a lot of, did a lot of this work before they were organized into political parties, long before. Mm -hmm, right. Mrs. Ingram, all of these, the, Mrs. Maynard was one, was one, Clement Maynard's okay. mother. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The times that we lived in then and the times that we live in now. But I, be I believe that we've had some major um, milestones in, in, in our walk. Um, this was one. The majority rule was another milestone. And, um, but Let's stop it right seems... There. Sorry? Let's stop right there. Now, okay. Majority, majority rule. Mm -hmm. True. You had majority. You see, this is a racial thing. You had mm -hmm. majority ruled in 1962 when women were allowed to vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. That meant that any Bahamian who was of age, man or woman, black or white, could vote. Mm -hmm. That's when you got majority rule. The majority of the people, not of black people or white people or green people or, or Greeks or, or, or Syrians, but the majority of people in the Bahamas, majority of the Bahamians were allowed to vote. And that is when it happened. And oddly enough, the women voted for the UBP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. they won the 62 election, that everybody thought that the PLP was sweeping in. And the women changed the vote in those days, because that was right. the first time they were allowed to vote. And that is when we got majority rule. But you've yeah. been convinced, like everybody else, and not being critical, so don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. I mean, that's that's one that's one method of of the final because I mean, people could go back and further in time and talk about once you get the majority of votes, people some people think the thing that that's majority rule, but the majority rule as we uh, represented today in our country, um, my understanding is based on oh. on the global not on color. Um, we might have some parties push that that might be the issue, but the issue is really access. And it's the fact that everybody has one vote um, and that one vote is accounted for voices. What about, um, what about Obama? Who? Obama in the United States. Okay, what about him? The majority of people in the United States, black people. Is the, you asking me if the majority of people in the United States are black? Yeah. No, I don't think so. The majority didn't rule then, I. No, but that's what I'm saying. Is my understanding is it has nothing to do with the color of the person. Um, we in the Bahamas choose that to be what we want to define it as, but majority rule technically is about access in terms of individuals having fair and equal access. One vote for one person, not one person who have 16 businesses have 16 votes. Or that, could vote on multiple islands, or this or that. No, it's just that's, that's the one man, one vote thing. That's my understanding of globally what majority rule is accepted to mean. It's one man, one vote. But unfortunately, that there was a good move because it was wrong. It was wrong. I mean, these people take could they would take a, a, an acre of land and mm -hmm. break it up into one foot squares. <laughs> And sell it and give you the, and then you give it back to the, the that is wrong. All of it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Four shillings. I didn't, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the majority rule is when you have one man, one vote, or one, not say man, one person, person, one person yeah. of age, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. just happens to be, it happens to be more 80% black people in this country. That means that the odds are, the odds are that the House of Assembly will show majority of people if they because if, yeah, everybody, yeah. if everybody yeah. started out having the freedom of, of a assembly or freedom of doing accomplishment, then that is what you would have. And you have to right. break that down when you when you have to when you say that every man has equal opportunity. If every man and woman have an equal opportunity then you right. get a, a decent majority rule. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about, you know, and I think that when Abraham Lincoln, whoever it was, who said 
every man is created equal. It's, right. it, it, it meant the same. It doesn't mean the same thing today. What it meant, it meant then, and everybody took for granted it meant, that uh, mm -hmm. the majority of the people uh, voted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the Bahamas, we didn't, we didn't take it to mean that. You see. No. Yeah, I I'm I, I agree. That's what I'm saying that the narrative was different, but that's not with the technical. Um, no, and I think that if we go away from that, the better the faster we go away from that, the better off we'll be. Um, I to totally agree. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's yeah. like in the United States, if you aren't a Democrat, if you are a Democrat, they can run a dead dog in there, and you go vote for it. That was the mm -hmm. same way in Nassau. It is still the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. Republican, if a dead vote, if you some of those Republicans running there, you wouldn't let in your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, they're running, and that's what they call freedom. That's not freedom. That's not right, freedom. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we 49, 40, yeah, 49 years. So, so we, we, we need to do some more of these uh, things that has been happening in the past when we had the growth because there was a 400 plus year or 300 plus year of, of colonial to get to to majority rule and then the independence and then so so what what would you say would be the next biggest milestone that we have to accomplish from a national point of view from the we're in, we're, we're in a difficult position mm -hmm. as, as a nation uh, we've borrowed too much money that we can't pay back and therefore we're slaves we're right back to where we started from Mm -hmm. uh, America says, jump, we jump. Right. Now they say China, and I've got nothing against Chinese people. I'm against their, their, their uh, government because I don't believe in communism. But it's getting to the point now when they say, they say jump, we'll jump. Mm -hmm. We have, in fact, through our greed and stupidity, have gotten ourselves back to where we started from. We're slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way we can break it is uh, a, a thing of education uh, and changing the minds of people and putting the emphasis on accomplishment, mm -hmm. your, your ability to work and take it off, off of your politics, your color and all sorts of stuff like that. But if you are qualified, if you qualified yourself, it's, it's our job to make sure you have the opportunity to qualify yourself. Now, right. if you qualified yourself, for that kind of position, you should be there. But we have to qualify ourselves for excellence mm -hmm. and opportunity and rec recognize that just because we're a Bahamian, we got the job. No, it's because we're qualified, we have the job. Right. Mm -hmm. You will notice, you've noticed, I've noticed regular, lo lately, that that is, that, that that's, you know, working for, working for a job Somebody showing up at eight o'clock to show up for fifteen minutes after eight to make no difference. Right. It's raining too much, they don't come to work. And all of this has been all of this is uh, and you say something to them, oh you don't like me because I's black. Mm -hmm. Or they don't like me because I's a Greek or something. Right. Or they right. don't like the mm -hmm. person because they aren't doing the job. And we have to get this into our people's into their minds. Let me just tell you this. Mm -hmm. When I was, they put Camp Road into my constituency and uh, they thought that I would be beaten that way. But anyway, I was in Camp Road, the great experience I ever had in politics. Mm -hmm. Those people in Camp Road produced some of the most brilliant children you can lay your eyes on. Mm -hmm. I started an after school program because I'm a product of St. Augustine's, where we right. went to school at eight in the morning and went home at eight at night. And we did all our work there and we were supervised, okay? And these kids would come here, the after school program, and I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating, some of them were absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. But you know where they're ended, a lot of them ended up? Well, so, you know mm -hmm. what? Because they would go to school, do extremely well, then they'd go home at three o'clock, the mother without working, and if they had a father, he was out working. Right. There was nobody home. He, as you know and I know, you get stumped in your homework. They had all the good intentions to do their homework at home. 
they run into a stump and they get frustrated. And they go to the front door and open it. And who's waiting for them? The gang. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have not... We have not supplied the supervision and the education and the understanding for children. And until we start doing that, we could forget being a nation. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Very, very deeply in the hole today. Everybody's horrified at all holdups. Everybody's horrified at all the shootings. And I'm not condoning any of them because I think they're awful. Right. But a lot of that is our fault because we turned them loose in the streets. And the only people they meet in the streets are the gangs. Right. right. That's the way it is. Uh, that's what, that was a, a mouthful to say how we should go forward. But I think yeah. sometimes. No, some but, but it's appreciated because, I mean, um, um, El, uh, the Honorable El Rosa Roca said, El Rosa Roca said that leaders must lead. And what it sound like you're saying is that we need to get back up on our horses and start leading from the front and, and making sure that the environment is the right environment for family and the values and stuff that, that your family grew up knowing, hard work from morning to night, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, well, this and is so, where we have to start. And, and we have mm -hmm. to start. I think we aren't like the Lone Rangers. I think America has the same problem. America right. has the same problem. They, have, they are not. But the, the, the experience, I suppose you may know it. Most people don't know it. But when St. Augustine started, we had to go to St. We had to go to school at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and and the first thing we did, we went to mass. And it was only a couple of years ago I realized Bill Allen wasn't a Roman Catholic because he used to be in the class. He used to be in the church. <laughs> in the and after that, we would go to class. Yeah. And then the bus would take us home. Mm -hmm. so take a route. I used to stop at the Tribune at three mm -hmm. o'clock. They would pick us up. We would go to St. Augustine's and we would, just whatever sport, with basketball, cricket, or whatever it may be, we were on it. We, 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 we participated in that. We had a half an hour to ourselves. And then we went into the study hall. Mm -hmm. At 8 o'clock at night, we closed the study, and the bus took you home. I had right. to ride a bicycle at night up because I was east of, of St. Augustine's. But the important thing, what I'm saying is this we were supervised as young people, we mm -hmm. were supervised from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. And when we went home, the, the, the parents who were out working were home. They fed us and we went to bed. And this is why you had people, well, Bill Allen and a lot of the mm -hmm. people I grew up with, graduated from St. Augustine's, went, went, to, went on to politics. But this is, this is how it was. Today, you go to Uriah McPhee or any of these public schools, any of these schools, not any public schools, mm -hmm. and they, they, the, the child is left to, on his own. Right. And this is what our problem is, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. and that's part of it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the girls' night out. Girls' night out. They're saying here that the, um, the great, in, great individual on today um, who never hesitates to speak his mind never stops her. I guess that's a, a compliment that they're giving you, sir, for the way you conducted yourself over all of these years. So as we wrap up now, what would you want to say to the public in a couple of uh, words? <laughs> Very difficult. It was a cartoon I saw the other day. Bugs Bunny was laying off with his legs crossed. And the fellow says he wanted to get to stand in his own two feet, get up there and stand in his own two feet. And mm -hmm. said to him, well, that's all right, he says, but you got to get off your backside first. Mm -hmm. oh, so in other words, mm -hmm. in other words, in other words, we got to start looking at things realistically and we have to start working at it and we have to make it work. We, mm -hmm. we have to stop relying on other people to tell us how to do things. That's one of the big problems of the Bahamas. If you're a Bahamian, you don't know anything. Right. The same place you come from in the United States and tells you the same thing. Well, he knows that he he got to be right. And that is one of another, another problem we have. We have to get self-confidence. We have to start leading. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop the foolishness. We aren't entitled to be in the House of Assembly. We get there because we're qualified. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. we have to do. And I'm, yeah, sorry I, I'm sorry if I upset you, but I usually do with people. No, 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 you, no Mr. Lapuche, no, you know, you're not going to upset me because, you know, yeah. when, when, when it comes to time, I can push back on, on, on whatever it is. Yeah. So, but, you know, um, the, these are times that we really need. And I, and I, I applaud persons like yourself, um, for taking the stance that they take, whether people like the stance or they don't like the stance, um, to me, the issue is taking a stand because it, it the world requires diversity, and if everybody's just going down the same path, then nothing's going to change. That's the way I look at it. So well, that's we're like, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to say one thing that though, the only way we we get all of this, we get back to the situation of having people, given the facts. You talk about the newspapers and the old man, given the facts. Mm -hmm. So that they and have enough respect for the people that they make the decisions through reason rather than emotion. Right. Mm -hmm. When we get to that point, then this country will take off like like gangbusters. Because I yeah. always tell people, this country is one of the best, other than Canada and Mexico, is one of the best placed countries in the world. We're right next to the largest market in the world, and we don't take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, I think that, that, that that's going to happen, but it's not going to happen until the generations Ys and Zs, those stand up and do something radical. Um, unfortunately, if we don't want the radical to be like what the small subset is doing, um, causing a menace to society, but hopefully their ingenuity will come through in some major way to get people back on course. And so I'd like to thank you for... Um, um, after myself, Madam Producer here in the studio for taking the time to be with us and to share the stories on uh, living legend that should be, um, if he's not considered one, on your dad, um, what all has happened in the, the media, building up the media, also in the House of Assembly and so forth. And hopefully people would find value in what was said today. And one of the things maybe is to understand that not everybody was a big street boy who was in the house back then when the PLP took over the government. So thank you kindly. Say hello, hello to the madam for me. Hello. And enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Good. You're welcome. Thank madam you. Producer, thank you. Enjoyed the show? Then subscribe to us for more educational and inspirational content. Ring the bell so you never miss a show. Let's change the narrative, 242.